Hey guys, it's so great to be here in beautiful Mount Rose, Minnesota. If you like what you're watching, please rate it and leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. And if you'd like to see more, then consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Hey guys, we're going to do a stick foundation comparison, overview, round up, head to head to head, Thunderdome, one stick, and never mind. I'm going to be talking about all of these stick foundations, comparing them, reviewing them, just telling you my thoughts on them. Before I get started, I'm going to tell you how this came about and then what you can expect to hopefully know by the time that this is over. A lot of you are probably familiar with the drag characters that my friend Jay and I do, Doris and Melba. If you're not, stop this video now, drop everything that you're doing, ignore the person that you're talking to while you're not listening to them and sitting on your phone, and go and watch my Doris and Melba playlist that I have on my YouTube channel, and uh, you're welcome. For those of you who do know, let's get started talking about these. Jay and I have used for years the Kryolan TV paint stick. This is a great foundation wonderful for drag. However, shades are often sold out. It's just proven to be kind of a pain in the butt to get our hands on, so I started to look for other products that might do the trick. Enter the Mayron Cream Blend Stick. It seemed like the natural choice. However, I wasn't really super jazzed about it. So then I decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tackle this like I would any other YouTube video that I do, any kind of, I, I want to say, makeup problem. So I bought a whole bunch of stick foundations. I tested them all out. I wrote notes. I compared them in different ways, different application methods, and then came up with kind of my solution. I decided it would be fun to share this with you guys because, hell, I did it, right? <laughs> So a while ago, I asked you guys, I posted a video, I asked, I said, I'm going to do this stick foundation video. I'm working on it now. Tell me what are some stick foundations. Give me one that you are really curious about, one that you just really want to include into the mix. And the response, of course, was the Tom Ford one, because you're mean to me. That's okay. So I have all these foundations. I've tested them all. I wrote out some questions to ask myself, and that is what I'm going to answer by the end of this. So by the time this video is over, you're going to know what my favorites are out of this pile for full coverage drag makeup, my favorites for medium coverage everyday makeup, my favorites for light coverage natural look, my favorite portable makeup, chuck it in your bag, on the go, touch up kind of makeup. You're also gonna find out my choice for oily skin types and dry skin types. And I'll tell you what I mean by full coverage, medium coverage, and light coverage when we get there. So let's get started with the one that sort of started this whole thing, the Kryolan TV paint stick. This did have a label once upon a time. This is a great foundation specifically for full, heavy coverage, block out your face makeup. You paint this all over the skin, buff it in with a dry sponge, and it, it does look really great. It drags, I don't know if you're gonna really be able to see this, it doesn't glide on very smoothly. There's a lot of drag to this. It's just super thick. It can slide around on the face a little bit. It'll pull up if you're not careful. This applies better in one even layer rather than building it up. I find it just lifts too much when you're trying to add it to itself. And it has something that no one mentions about this foundation, an overwhelming smell. That like talcum powder, baby powder smell is so strong in this. Now, when I say medium coverage, everyday foundation, what I'm talking about is my favorite application method for a lot of these is a couple passes on the face. You could, you could do it on your arm, I suppose, a damp sponge, and then blend it in that way. I tend to not like damp sponges for applying foundation. This is the Real Techniques one. But for stick foundation, cream foundation, I think that they just work so well. It's my favorite application for all of these. It's how I tested them. And this just does not respond to that. This laughs at a damp sponge. It just like, it's like, <laughs> really? You think I'm gonna move for that? You're high. It just won't budge. It's not a great everyday makeup. It's more of a full coverage, like I'm gonna block out my face kind of makeup. Let's talk about the Mayron one because this was the second one that I bought. Now, I kind of let the cat out of the bag a little bit when I said I wasn't too jazzed about this. The Mayron Cream Blend Stick had a tendency to 
cling to dry patches on me. It looked streaky really easily. It required a lot of tapping into the skin to get it to look nice and then going back with a brush to get it to just even out the color. Uh, it's the most greasy looking out of all of these stick foundations. After setting it with a matte powder, it looked acceptable for about a half hour, but then it started to really separate on the skin and just look like crap. What's nice about this though is how easily that goes onto the skin. It is super soft, really, really feels nice. It just don't look good because it's cheap. If you want to give it a try, give it a try. A lot of people do like this. It's kind of drag on a budget. I think there are other options for drag on a budget. And I'll tell you those in a minute. So I went to the department store. I knew I wanted to try the Anastasia Beverly Hills one because it's fairly popular. I go to the, I've, I've tried to buy this before and a friend of mine who works at the counter said, please don't because when this launched, she said, I have never returned so many of a single product this gets returned all the time. So I didn't buy it, but I knew I wanted to get it for this video. So I got it. Now, this is kind of a tricky one because this gets very mixed reviews. And I think the people who like it are just big fans of the brand or happen to have a face that just works with this. I found that this looked really patchy on dry areas. It did smooth out with powder when I was done. The initial application looked okay, but it disappeared completely from my nose and my forehead. It separated, it looked a mess. It was confusing enough to make me actually want to look up other reviews. I didn't look up reviews for any of these. I wanted kind of my own thoughts, but I actually did research on this because this thing confused the hell out of me. And I found the people who love it will go, oh, it's great, all you have to do is, and then they list 48 steps to get this to work. I think that's too much effort. I don't like it. Again, some people might like it, that's okay, we're all different. I'm just telling you, I thought it looked a hot mess. I won my favorite. Bare Minerals. This is a new foundation. This is Complexion Rescue Hydrating Foundation Stick. This one had just come out and I was really interested in trying it because its whole marketing thing is it's made with all these like water. It's like, it's all water. It's all these natural, whatever. It's watery. No, no. It does, <laughs> this is the funny thing. No surprise. It actually feels like water on the skin when you apply it. This color's a little bit yellow for me. But, and so it's it's actually like, when I put it on my arm, it actually feels kind of cooling. It's not a lot of coverage. It blends just okay. Application is where this starts to get a little bit tricky. Once you get the hang of this and figure out how to apply it, my thought on this was, if I had a teenager who was just getting into makeup and I didn't want them to look like full on Elizabeth Berkeley and Showgirls, I would gravitate towards this. This is a really great first makeup makeup. It feels very breathable and it has a natural look to it. There's not a lot of coverage. It also just doesn't build. So it's not a good candidate for a drag makeup because it just doesn't build. So I know that that's kind of a mixed bag, but that's really sort of my thoughts on it. Bobby Brown. This one was a shock for me. Let me turn it right side up. This applied so well with a damp sponge. It blended with like hardly any, like you just showed this, the sponge, and it went, oh, hi, and it was done. It looked amazing on the skin, undetectable, zero texture, still glowy enough to want to set it with powder, but it, just to help it to stay put, but it applied effortless, 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 effort, oh my Lord, effortless, oh my, effortlessly. I wore this four times, no, five actually, because I wore this in a video. During this testing process, I kept going back to this one. It actually surprised me. I didn't expect that I was going to like it as much as I did. It's, it's the perfect weight. It's not too light. It's not too heavy. It's just like the definition of what I want in a cream foundation. Perfect. Dermablend, good old Dermablend. Now I use the Dermablend pot often. It's a go-to for me. I'll mix it with uh, the William Tuttle foundations, which are much more oily. This is like a body concealer stick, I think. Quick fix body corrector. Now this thing, it glides on very easily. It blends very easily. It disappeared into the skin fairly well. However, um, after about, uh, it almost seems dryish, but after about a half hour or so, 
it started to look really, really, really greasy. So you're gonna wanna set this with powder. It's not bad at all, it, it, it was fine. And I could see completely using this and, and chucking it in a bag and having it be sort of your touch up makeup. It reminded me, and I should I should have talked about these together. It reminded me a lot, but I'm going in like alphabetical order based on department and whatever. It's my Virgo thing. It reminded me a lot of the Lancome Foundation, but I will tell you the differences when we get there. Hourglass, this is the Hourglass, what is this thing called, the Vanish Foundation? Which by the way, I actually love this so much that when this launched, I got it because I was gonna do like a comparison between the Vanish liquid and this, and I don't even wanna talk about this. I just wanna return it. It's not for me. They did not design that with me in mind. This is just super dry. It looks okay if I mix it with uh, about uh, one part to four parts moisturizer and put it on my skin. Otherwise, nah, and I just don't need a foundation that bad. So the Hourglass uh, Vanish uh, Stick. This is gonna be someone who has oily skin. They're gonna probably hate this. This is very, very emollient, very creamy. This reminds me a lot, oh, it feels so good. It just feels good to touch. This reminds me a lot of Max old Studio Sculpt Concealer that came in the glass pot. I think that they're very, very similar. This, side note, has the best twist up mechanism easily compared to any of these because it clicks into place. It makes it so, it's, it doesn't slide around. You're not having to worry about, oh, you put the cap on and then accidentally twisted it. It's fantastic. I really, where's the logo? There it is. I really, look at all those fingerprints though. I really, really like this one. I use this as a concealer, not necessarily as a foundation. I could see that this might work as a drag foundation if you wanted that full coverage and you wanted to spend the money. Uh, I think there's one other here if you really wanted to spend a bunch of money that would work better. I would use this for contour if I wanted something high end and I wanted something that felt like luxurious and I was still doing like that kind of drag look, this would be my contour. It has a thick buttery texture. It, it requires just a little bit more effort to blend because it is thick. It's creamy, it's pigmented, it wears really well. It is best for dry and maybe normal kind of combination skin. So let's talk about the Lancome foundation. Now this one I think was another recent release. I don't remember what the heck this thing is called. Worth mentioning, just like I said, this has a really excellent twist up feature. When I got this, new out of the box, the cap was crap. It's like it wants to fall off all the time and it feels kind of cheap. It has a cream to powder vibe about it. It's not a real true cream to powder foundation, but it just sort of has a that sort of feel, that kind of quality. Because of that, I didn't need to powder this at all because I have dry skin, so it just wasn't necessary. This, when I blended it with a, a damp sponge, it was just gone. There was nothing there. And so it just didn't, while it looked, I guess, fine, I guess it looked undetectable because it didn't really look like anything. And these are very, very similar this is just more full coverage. This is much more light coverage. That's the big difference. That's how I would describe the difference between the two. So if you know one, you kind of know the other. I, eh, it, and, and I would use them both the same, depending on what level of coverage I wanted. These would be great. Just throw it in your bag and, and you need a little touch up kind of foundations, especially the Lancome one, because it has a little bit of a powdery finish. Makeup Forever. This one I had high hopes for, and I don't know why because I've been disappointed in Makeup Forever's uh, foundation products before. This, um, this is this is what I want to say about this. This is just incredibly visible on the skin, and I know this shade is like a little. We'll see on camera, it probably looks fine. It's a little light for my face. It, it does the same thing. Okay, you know what? These two, the Mayron one that I don't like, and this. They're not identical, but they might as well be for how they look on the face. I just thought the Makeup Forever one, it's, it, I can see it. I see it, it gathers in my pores. It just, it's like the Mayron one. It separates, it's settled into fine lines really within 10 minutes. It's just all up in the creases. I didn't like it at all, at all. And I don't remember where I bought this, but I want to return it. I have a box of my receipts. So just in case there was anything I truly, truly hated. Now, Tom Ford, Traceless Foundation Stick. This is the most expensive here in the bunch. This 
I love this. I've had it before. I did a review on this years ago, uh, around the time that it first came out. This is a wonderful color for me. This is, by the way, uh, Ivory Rose 3.5. This is basically like the Bobbi Brown makeup, but which I, I mean, technically isn't a surprise. They're, they're both Estee Lauder brands but more coverage. So this is a little harder to blend. It's a little waxier than the Bobbi Brown one. It took more time to kind of blend out, but when you're done, flawless mannequin skin. It's beautiful. This would do the trick. If you wanted to spend a lot of money on your drag makeup, this would probably do the trick. I don't know that I'd recommend it, but if you wanted to, this one and like this for your contour. Treat yourself, right? Now from one of the most expensive ones, let's go to one of the cheapest ones. I have the Revolution Makeup Revolution London Revolution Makeup. And you know why I say that, because it says Revolution Makeup Revolution London on it. What the hell? So this one, I was very curious about because it is fairly affordable. It feels kind of like the Anastasia one. It's a little bit maybe creamier. This is a nice color. This is F4. It's a nice beige. It's not too warm. It's not too cool. This blended well. It looked decent. It's not a bad, like, medium coverage foundation. Easier to wear, I guess. It's a little greasy, yes. So it's going to require setting with powder. Even on my dry, dry, dry ass skin that could use Vaseline as moisturizer, you're still going to want to set this. I did a test with this because I believe that this has potential to overtake the Krylon one. The Krylon one ha is thicker. It's it's definitely, uh, you know, maybe preferred drag makeup. But for affordable instead of the Mayron one, I really liked this. Maybelline Superstay uh, Multi-Use Foundation Stick. This is, I just wanted another drugstore one. This is, I couldn't find the Milani one at the time, and I didn't know that Wet n Wild had one. So I got this. This that's how much product you get. Let's talk about that first. It's it's ridiculously a small amount. Um, it applied easily. It blended well. Um, I could see it on my skin. It looked very powdery. It clung to dry patches. This is the most cream to powder looking out of all of the sticks. I don't think that it's actually cream to powder formula, but it, it looks like one. It would be better on oily combination skin uh, than, than my dry skin. Um, it's not a bad product. It blended okay. It just wasn't my favorite. I, I just didn't like how it looked. On me, it just looked a little obvious. And it's hard to tell. Sometimes with, with products like this, with cream to powder products, you think that they're going to look great on oily skin and then they just cause a ton of problems. They break down really easily. It's, 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 it's hard to say. Um, I wasn't a big fan though. And the amount that you get I don't know. It's dinky. The Wet n Wild one doesn't have that much either. But for some reason, it doesn't bother me as much because it's Wet n Wild. <laughs> what do you What do you want? What, you, you know what you You know what you're getting. So the Milani one is new. I didn't know that I was going to get this by the time the video came out because I couldn't find it anywhere. But I did finally find it. This is 220, and I had very high hopes for this, and was very sadly disappointed. It was hard to blend. I don't know if you saw that, but it created a lot of drag on the skin when I was applying that. It looked actually kind of scaly. I could see where it would sink into pores and it slid around on the rest of my face. I tried several times in several different ways to get this to work. And it, it, it just, it's, it's not dry, but it's not really greasy. It's just kind of weird. Wet and wild. Now, after testing Maybelline, Milani, and Wet n Wild together, this was my favorite of the three. It applies nicely. It blends very easily with a sponge. It offered light to medium coverage, fair, fair, really fairly light. It wasn't drying. It wasn't greasy. It's It would be a good contender for drag. It's just you can't build it up enough. It's just not enough coverage. But for everyday, natural looking, it actually, I was impressed. I was just, I was like, okay, wet and wild, do your thing. So let's talk about my favorites here in different categories, and then I'll let you go about your lives. Full coverage drag makeup. What does that mean? When I say that, I mean you are applying this in a nice, even layer all over the face, and then blending it in with a dry sponge. 
setting it with a huge mess of powder and going on and doing your thing. My favorites, the Krylon TV paint stick. It works well. It just does. It's just kind of hard to find sometimes. The next one is this, the Makeup Revolution, Revolution, Makeup Revolution London one. Um, this will be tested the next time um, I do Melba's makeup, uh, just to see how it looks on camera. But it is much more accessible than this. It's much more affordable. I think it does the job. You set this with a ton of powder, you can build this up. I think it's great. And maybe the Tom Ford one if you really wanted to spend the dough, but I don't know, uh, I wouldn't want to, but you can. So there you go, we'll count that one too. Now. Favorites for medium coverage everyday kind of makeup. Again, I talked about my application method that I prefer, which is swiping it onto the skin in just spots, not all over the face, blending it in with a damp sponge. And, and when I say damp sponge, it doesn't have to be a beauty blender. You can use a regular old latex wedge, go full on 90s, we're good. Now my favorites for that are the Bobbi Brown and the Tom Ford. Also the Wet n Wild, and for, for different reasons. Bobbi Brown, looks great, medium coverage, wonderful. Wet n Wild looks great, a little bit lighter coverage. Tom Ford looks great, more full coverage. That's really the differences between the three. But those would be my favorites for regular, everyday, normal wear makeup. When I say light coverage, if I'm talking about light coverage foundation, basically like tinted moisturizer levels, this is how I apply it myself. I take this stick and I put it on the palm of my hand like this, a couple passes, and then I take my moisturizer, a couple of squirts in my hand, I rub my hands together and I apply it on my face. That gives me basically a tinted moisturizer. My favorites for that, again, the Bobbi Brown and the Wet n Wild. The Tom Ford one, I would throw into that category, but it really can't be sheared out as much. It's the same with Hourglass. These really just don't shear out as much as I would want if I was doing a like complete bare face, minimum, no makeup, makeup kind of look. Minimal, whatever, whatever it is that I'm trying to say. My favorite portable touch up on the go kind of makeup, I would say probably Lancome. Lancome over Dermablend because Lancome didn't require any powder to set. And it looked fine. It's just, if you want more coverage, Tom Ford. Now, my choice for dry skin is gonna be the Hourglass and the Makeup Revolution one. These are my favorites for dry skin. For oily skin, I would say the Lancome for uh, light coverage, if you just need a little bit. And the Tom Ford, again, where did he go? Here. The Krylon stick could be a potential excellent choice, but because it's kind of a grease paint stick, it's just gonna cause a lot of problems. It's gonna actually probably make you more oily than you would be if you weren't using it. And I could see it causing like breakouts and stuff like that. It's just a little bit too, it's not, it's a lot too heavy. Let's, let's be honest. So there you go, that's it. This is my uh, foundation stick kind of review roundup, testing all of these. Um, uh, what do you think? Do you, have you have any of these? Have you tried any of them? I was truly shocked at how much I loved the Bobbi Brown one. I've had this before and I've used it all up, so I knew that I was gonna like this one. I just didn't wanna buy it again. And I was very happy to find this. So that's gonna be my new, my new drag makeup, barring any horrible complications with it but I think it'll be okay. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, again, please leave them in the comments section. And um, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.